Now we can stack another strategy there as well, where we add in exercise and particularly exercise in a fasted state. So for example, today, right, as we're doing this interview, it's 1130. I'm going to work out probably around uh, 1230 today. And I'm going to do an intense workout for about 30 to 35 minutes or so. And I haven't eaten since seven o'clock, you know, I finished dinner uh, by seven o'clock last night. So, you know, I'll have fasted for over 18 or roughly about 18 hours or so when I'm doing that workout. So my body's in fat burning mode. Now it has to switch to becoming anaerobic, right? And burning sugar really effectively during that workout. And then right after that workout, I usually wait about 20 minutes or so. And now I'm getting back into fat burning mode and then I'm going to consume a meal right? And so my body's going through this metabolic switch, this kind of stress or this hormetic stress that challenges it to have to adapt and get better at burning fat and burning sugar. And the, the again, the time period between switching there, I get really metabolically flexible doing this. All right. So there's great benefit there. And then another strategy, and in fact, I did this this morning, is actually exposing your body to either extreme heat or extreme cold. So you can actually add in this hormetic stress of temperature change. So where does temperature change come in? Like, for example, I did a, a shower this morning and the last minute of my shower, I went cold. Okay. Now it's, it's like four, you know, 35, 40 degrees outside out here. We have frost all over our, you know, grass and everything. And so most people would say, well, you got to be careful, bundle up, right? You know what I mean? And 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 you got to be careful in the cold, but actually getting short-term cold exposure, I actually went out this morning too uh, with a t-shirt and shorts on and stood with my feet in the, in the frost, right? And just breathed, stretched, right? Walked around a little bit for, I don't know, five minutes or so, right? Grounded my body, got that cold exposure. And it was like, oh, I felt awake and alive, right? And then later on, like two hours later, I did a, a shower and I finished it with the cold water. So that cold exposure challenges my mitochondria now to produce heat more effectively. And it tells my body, okay, I need more mitochondria in my um, heat or my, I guess you could say my, my thermal regulating tissue, right? Which a big part of your thermal regulation is your fat tissue. So your body, you have this kind of fat we call, uh, we have white fat and we have beige fat and we have brown fat. Brown fat is actually fat tissue that has, it's rich in mitochondria. White adipose tissue does not provide as much of a kind of a heating or a thermal effect, doesn't have as much mitochondria. Beige fat is kind of the key in between, right? Beige fat can change. It can become more white or more brown, depending on the environmental stimuli. If you're doing intense exercise, it's going to become more brown. If you're getting cold exposure, you're going to create more of this. You're going to, you're going to convert the beige into more brown fat. That brown fat's more metabolically active and less inflammatory. We know that fat tissue itself acts as an endocrine organ, right? Meaning that, you know, we used to think it was just storing calories and that is an important component of fat tissue. But it also acts as, you know, it can, it has a heating component, a thermal component, but then also it releases hormones, um, what we call these adipokines like leptin and, ad, and adiponectin and things like that, that have to do with regulating metabolism and your satiety level. And then also inflammation plays a big role with, in, with uh, inflammatory cytokines and things like that. And so we know that the more white or visceral fat that you have, right? Fat around your organs and things like that, the more inflammation you're going to produce, right? Now we all need some of that white fat. That's, that plays an important component, but we want to convert this beige fat, not into white, but into brown fat, right? When converted into brown fat, it's going to bring down inflammation. It's going to improve insulin sensitivity. It's going to improve fat burning, leptin sensitivity. So we feel satiated. We're going to get a lot of great benefits there. And so cold exposure will help that conversion. Cold exposure also helps release something called cold shock proteins, which these cold shock proteins go in and they break down older damaged mitochondria, older damaged cells and cellular components. And then they help with this whole process we call autophagy or mitophagy, where the body now takes and actually takes all the raw materials and creates new healthy 
mitochondria, right? New healthy stress resilient mitochondria, new healthy stress resilient cells. Mm -hmm.